Yes, good evening. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. We're going to be talking about Pierre Emil Hoiberg because the guy is not happy at Tottenham. You don't have to be highly intelligent to see that his body language is not natural. He looks uncomfortable. And we're going to dive into an article coming out from the Sports Witness. If you haven't already, please do go down and drop a like on the video. It does absolute wonders to the channel and lets me know you are enjoying the content. So what are you waiting for? And if you're new, please do hit that subscribe button. Now, before we get into the article, I want to talk about Hoiberg in general, because I've always thought Hoiberg gives his all. I know a lot of people don't rate him because he can't really play the Ange ball like a lot of people think. I actually think in, in the number six role against certain teams, he could do a relatively good job in the midfield against certain opposition. But if you cast your mind back to the summer, he wanted to move to Atletico Madrid. He was dying to get that move. Hoiberg is a sort of player that under the right manager runs through walls for you. That is what he's like. For Jose, he did that. For Conte, he did that. And for Diego Simeone, he would do exactly the same. Now, Hoiberg just it doesn't look happy to me. We're going to read this report and it says, Pierre Amor Hoiberg on if he's frustrated by the fact he's been starting less often this season. It's not a secret, but it's something, it's not a secret. What's not a secret? That he's frustrated in general or frustrated with the lack of game time. But it's something I'm, I I never make a fuss about. Something It's not something I make a fuss about either, sorry. I can put my head on the pillow knowing I'm giving my fall to the coach that he should believe in me. Now, the first question is it harsh that Hoiberg hasn't played a huge amount of games this season? Is that Angie's fault? Because we're, we're not exactly in Europe, so the rotation isn't as frequent as you'd get with, say, an Arsenal, a Liverpool, a Man City, a Villa, for instance. You know, it, it, is that unfair on Hoiberg, first of all? I don't necessarily think so. Hoiberg's 28 years of age. He's 29 in August. He has played 27 games for Tottenham in the Premier League this season. Minutes-wise, he's only played 998. Overall, he's played 1,191 minutes. Now, I think it's a little bit, this one's a bit of a grey area because I don't necessarily think to get the most out of Ange Ball, you can really play Pierre and Hoiberg. But I also get the managers, for, I also get Hoiberg's frustration because the manager, Ange Postacoglu, has not played him. Now, Ange, for me, a lot of the time gets the substitution. You know, I feel that he makes the right substitutions at the right times. But there has been some games where, you know, he's brought on this or that player and it hasn't really made a lot of sense. In terms of Pierre Amor Hoiberg, you know, what, what I, I like, yes, he's, he's frustrated, he's annoyed, he's fuming, whatever emotion you want to throw. But how much more game time are you expecting to have when you've got Bissouma, you've got Saar? You've got Lacelso, you've got Skip, you've got Madison, Bisuma. Like you've got all these bodies in front of you that are playing a very similar position to you. And let's not get it twisted. Tottenham players, a lot of the midfielders have a very similar profile. What are you expecting? Like I, I don't understand it. Like you've you've played twenty seven appearances in the league. You've had over a thousand minutes in a team which isn't playing in Europe, in a team that plays one game a week, in a team that's trying to build the foundations to to grow like this. What, what more are you expecting from the team? I'm a little bit like, it's a little bit of a grey area for me. He's going to leave in the summer, the likelihood is. He, he's had opportunities to go to Atletico Madrid or Juventus, and he hasn't really taken them. He's been with us for a few years now. He's had Champions League experience, Premier League experience, Europa League experience, Conference League experience. But now he's at a point where he needs to go and find he needs to go and find another club. It's as simple as that. Let's not beat around the bush. He needs to find another club. Like us sitting there, us, us talking about this, you know, I, I I don't really I don't really get it. Is he good enough? That's another argument. Is Hoiberg actually good enough to be starting regularly for Tottenham in the Ange system in the Premier League? That's another question. 
Like, like I said, I think it could do a job, but maybe not over the... Now, moving on to the summer transfer window, we are being linked to quite a number of different players, different profiles, different positions. One player that keeps getting brought up, Ali Gold actually released a report on him on the Football London, and I believe the Spurs have put it out. Here it is. Tottenham remain interested in Bournemouth defender Ilya Zabarini. Now, Tottenham have also held... Plenty of interest in the likes of Tosin Adarabayo, in the likes of Lloyd Kelly. None of these players are really exciting me. Like, yes, they'd be probably smart buys, but Bournemouth defender Zabarini, is he the guy to take Tottenham forward? When you look at the guy's numbers, he's being compared to Savic from Atletico Madrid. He's being compared to Diego Lietti from Union Berlin. He's being uh, compared to Nuyan Perez from Udinese. And all those teams I've just named all play in a low block system. Now, when you look at his numbers in a Bournemouth shirt, like, I mean, like tackles, 57. So he's in the top 43%. Interceptions is low. Blocks is relatively high. Clearances, aerial duels, one are low. Passes is low. Pass completions low. Progressive passes is low. Progressive carries is low. Successful take-ons, touches, shot creating actions. Like the guy's stats are absolutely horrendous. And like there's absolutely zero correlation to why Tottenham would want to go in and sign, you know, a player of that quality. If you compare that, for instance, those stats to the likes of Christian Romero, right? And you see his stats, it's a completely different ball game. Like, look at look at Romero's stats in all of those areas. That is the level of defender we should be looking at bringing in. Tackles is high, interceptions high, blocks high, aerial duels, passes, the top 6%, pass completion, progressive passes, progressive carries, successful take-ons, expected goals, shot creating actions, non-penalty goals. They're all very, very, very high. And it kind of, it makes me, I've been speaking about this time and time and time again. And I said this in yesterday's video at about Eze. And I said, Tottenham cannot make that mistake again. And that's not necessarily talking about attacking players. That's collectively as a transfer policy we can't make that mistake. We have to push forward now. Like we're we're on the cusp of getting back into the Champions League for the first time in a couple of years now, in uh, under under a new, you know, a new regime. I, I I think we I think we just have to aim our heads a little bit higher. Like I look at it and I just think for us to get back to the very top to be challenging for league titles, the likes of Zabarini. Is that the sort of signings we want? Let's be honest. Um, I, I, I look at it this way and think Tottenham at this window have got a massive, massive opportunity. You know, there's rumours circulating about Guardiola leaving now. You've got Jurgen Klopp leaving, potentially Xavi Alonso or someone else coming in. There's going to be a lot of doors openings. Lots of players are going to be leaving. You know, I don't think the Liverpool squad, a lot of them will probably be linked with moves away. The same as um, a few players from Chelsea, a few players from Arsenal. You know, and I, and I think we, we Tottenham could could close the gap with clever recruitment. I'm not saying we're going to close the gap in one window, but we can start to close the gap. Signings like Eze, Neto, signings like Rafina, not bringing in the likes of Zabarini, who doesn't really play in a possession-based back four, plays in a low block in a in a in a in a Bournemouth side that have conceded a lot of goals this season. Like I, I understand Tosnad a bio, homegrown, relatively good player, come out of City's Academy. You know he's going to be good on the ball, but Bournemouth have conceded 52 goals this season. Like I, I don't know. I understand the links to Lloyd Kelly and Tosnander Bio because they're homegrown, but he's a Ukrainian international. Like we've already got young defenders like the likes of Radu Dragusin. We've got Vizokovic coming through, Ashley Phillips. You've got Royale and Davis that can play there. For me, it doesn't really make any any logical sense. This it doesn't make any logical sense. Like 
I don't know what you guys make of it. Let me know down below if you haven't already. Make sure you smash the like on the video if you're new around here. And let me know your thoughts on the Hoiberg news as well. Is it justified? Is it unjustified? I'll see you all soon. Thank you all for watching. We are 